Hi hey everyone, Bernard here. Hope you're all staying safe and well. Welcome to the Citizen Channel. As we look back at, uh, yeah, what's to sing? Is it a song, isn't it? Uh, 19, is it? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's to do with Vietnam, though, isn't it? It's nothing to do with beating the German team. And on, well, it's not on their territory, was it? It was at new, on a neutral territory. It was like we could have played in Switzerland, couldn't we? I suppose against the Germans. But there you go. Yeah, we're going to look back at the game last night. Uh, Manchester City at Borussia Mönchengladbach at the Puskas Arena in Budapest. Um, spitting, spitting now. 8 p.m. 24th of February. Yeah, we're going to look back at. Uh, Russia Munch and Gladbach, nil, zilch, nothing, not a lot, Manchester City, two, yeah, could have been a little bit more, couldn't it, but it was an efficient, efficient performance, I would call that, last night, not overly spectacular, just efficient, of course, it was a round of 16 first leg, his job's only half done, it's half time, but apparently no English team in the last 16 has uh, ever won away from home in the Champions League and then not gone on to go on to the next round. So there you go. That's, that's all three English teams, isn't it, in the last 16? So, uh, yeah, hopefully none of us will let, let each other down. But, hey, I don't mind if the other two get beat. That'll do for me. I'm not that bothered. So we'll have our match analysis today. Match starts, of course, with the, the ratings for the players. Manchester Evening News is Simon Pekowski's ratings, my little ratings as well. Yeah, a couple of differences, not not too many. Uh, we'll have the quirky stats, of course, and record breakers. Yeah, there's another one or two of those, so that'll be fantastic. Uh, yeah, we'll make a little, have a look, a little, a little think back on Brush and Munch and Gladback, a little think back about City as well, because we had a quite animated pep, didn't we, from time to time last night? So we'll we'll have a look and see what we're all animated about. So <laughs> we can probably, probably know, don't we? But at the end of the game, it's not, not getting animated about finishing when you've got uh, you've got midfielders who uh, obviously are not are not strikers. Are they all right? A couple of strikers, perhaps, perhaps Jesus got a bit of stick, didn't he? Because he perhaps could have finished one better. But uh, it's not good pep whinging at him too much. I mean, the hard midfielders who should be able to to hit a ball between two two posts, but uh, yeah, um, he brings some of it on himself. So I mean, I'll, I'll stick up for the players a little bit, but hey, not too much. Right, please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button. We're trying to get to a thousand. Please help me get to that thousand by the end of uh, the football season, the end of May, if possible. That'd be great if you can do that. We're at about 7.30ish at the moment, so 270 to go. So, sounds a hell of a lot, but uh, if we can get 800 by the end of the March, then we're on, on, on to good track there. So please, uh, if you're not subscribed, do so. Or if you've got any City following friends, please point them in my direction. You know, I do these these City present vlogs, do City history, City quizzes, City vlog magazines, lots of different things. So please, if you can help us out and get me to that figure, that'll be absolutely fantastic. And you will see stuff on my film and TV channel as well. Oh, oh I spread myself thinly don't I? I, love, I love films and tv i do have a chill i do re film reviews tv drama reviews uh, information vlogs uh Hopefully when this road to COVID recovery or whatever it's called uh, comes to an end, we'll be doing cinema releases, information, stuff like that again. So if you're very interested in that, please have a look at that. Or if you know someone who might be interested, please point them in my direction. And all comments are very, very welcome. Get lots of comments. It's fantastic. Got some regulars. And please, every every new guy who comments, it's fantastic. I just, it just makes me feel as though, you know, it's worthwhile doing this. I do enjoy doing the present ones. Obviously, I get a lot, a lot of memories from people when I do the history ones as well. So it's fantastic. So any comments are always welcome. And please, if you can't give us a comment, just give us a thumbs up. We try and, we try and get about between 20 and 30 for these football ones. So please, if you can give us a little thumbs up and split second to do that. And uh, you will see links for Facebook and Twitter. So if you follow or friend me on there, do check every three or four days and follow and friend everyone back. Right, here we go. Started lineup. Yeah, five changes. I think Pep's more or less said now. Uh, from now till the end of the season, uh, probably not when it gets to the crucial games, perhaps at the end of the season, but uh, we're probably going to be seeing five change, five, six, seven changes a game. So it's all right, we've got a fully fit squad, which we almost have, isn't it? But uh, yeah, so we're going to get have to get used to this. So I have to think of that when I'm doing my predict my lineup predictions because I got I was a bit rubbish this week, but uh, I'll have to I'll have to allow for that. So I think I know what I'm doing for the West Ham game anyway. Yeah, um, he explained his five changes, Pep, by saying. We play three days, travel, couldn't train much. In three days, we play at 12.30. It's an incredible challenge and everyone needs to be involved. Next game, we change five, six, seven players. The only way to sustain every player involved. So there you go, from, from the horse's mouth. First. So there you go. Uh, team, Edison Walker, Diaz, Laporte, Cancelo, Rodri, Gundogan, Foden, Bernardo, Jesus and Sterling. Uh, sub Stefan Carson, Stones, Aguero, Zinchenko, KDB, Torres, Mendy, Ferner, Mares, Garcia. 
Garcia and Doyle. I think I'll get on there one day. I mean, there's that many of them. Uh, yeah, I got, I say, I got six right. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to brag about that. There's certainly nothing to brag about, have I? But uh, I did get six right. There's no real, uh, there's no real excuses. I won't even give you any. I'm just useless. That's all there is to it. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, I wanted uh, stones, to be honest with you. Uh, I wasn't alone in that. I thought, but having said that, he's got to, he's be, certainly been playing against West Ham, I thought. So obviously on the basis of what Pep said, uh, perhaps it wasn't unusual not to see Stones and uh, I was glad KD, not glad KD was benched but as I said at the last game it looked as though some of our other players were, were sort of in the shadow because KDB was back so it's nice to see him on the bench so that again a couple of our midfielders could have a bit more prominent display and uh, obviously Cancelo turn, turned up didn't he for that one this, this time. Uh, it was Laporte's 100th appearance in all competitions for City, so that's uh, nice to see. Any pre-match social media talk? Well, JSGC, if you sort of uh, watched that guy at JSGC171, some great stuff on there. Uh, decent team. I'd rather stone started, if I'm honest. See, I had to agree with him. But other than that, I am happy with that team, yes. So I think most City fans were. I didn't see a lot of negatives. There's one or two. People say, why is everyone negative? I, I must have blocked them all, because I never see these. Uh, Phoenix at 12th Blue. Foden and Raz to stretch the stretch the pitch. Bernardo and Count Cancelo in the half spaces and Gundogan running inside with Jesus. Yeah, it was interesting. It didn't quite work out like that, but I can see his point. Yeah, the match officials all from Portugal. The referee was Arthur. I'll call him Arthur. He said Arthur. Arthur Diaz. Uh, is there any, any relation? Uh, would that be allowed? <laughs> Assistant referee uh, one was Rui Tavares. That's a pop group, isn't it? Assistant referee two, Bruno Rodriguez. Uh, fourth official, Hugo Miguel. VAR, Joao Pinero, all from Portugal and uh, solely Italian. They always have an odd one. I don't know why they always have an odd one. I don't, is it just for balance? I'm not too sure. But there's always one guy who's not from the same country. Uh, assistant video assistant was uh, Massimilio Iratti from Italy. There you go. So very unusual. I'll have, to, I'll, have to, I'll have to look into that. Yeah, match summation. First 45 minutes. Yeah, uh, six minutes really. First big chance. Foden brings a comfortable save from the keeper. Uh, 16 minutes. A good opportunity for uh, three. Three City players, but we just couldn't get a strike. We were sort of, it was in and out around the box, weren't it? I think Gundogan had his chance. I think Foden might have had a go. Bernardo, I don't know, but we had like two or three opportunities where we just couldn't find the space to actually get a strike on goal or they got brought blocked so that was like 16 minutes that was a little bit frustrating I thought I think Sterling had started it all off and wandered around a little bit too much 19 minutes the first time first time really brushing munching glad back a, a, a stretch city but uh, a poor pass which was yeah, it happened a lot for Borussia last night a poor pass sort of broke down the attack you know when you when you think they got in with a chance it just fell flat on 19 minutes so on 29 minutes, of course, it was 1-0. We'll go over to Mr. Phil Banerjee. I've got his report on the goal today. So we'll go over to Mr. Phil Banerjee. 29 minutes, 1-0 for City. City took the lead. Uh, Cancelo, superb long cross from the left, was headed in by Bernardo at the far post. The ball in by Cancelo was perfect. Bernardo's movement between two defenders was so smart and his header, which was across and away from Sommer, could not have been better placed. Absolutely. My little thoughts. Yeah, I think it was a poor clearance that led to... Um, uh, from uh, from uh, Brussia that led to Cancelo obviously picking up and then he wasn't sort of closed down, he was given plenty of room and then Bernardo obviously, textbook header wasn't it, back across the goal, that's that's what you taught and uh, yeah, he looked, uh, yeah, great goal from our seven foot tall player wasn't it, our seven foot tall Bernardo, some other guys, I'll have a word about that later but still have, some other guys might learn from him, uh, great, great goal, fantastic, did everything right and later on he, he does another good header doesn't he, uh, 40 minutes, so that's 1-0, 40 minutes Cancelo well over from a nice one two with Jesus, yeah, he played it really well and then blasted over the nearly man I call him, didn't he? But more on that later as well. Uh, 40 46 minutes just before half time, uh, Foden chance, wasn't it? Just just too high, it just kept going up and up and up. It wouldn't wouldn't drop uh, in the one minute injury time, so that was clear. Perhaps could have done better, could have hit the target. Please, we've got to hit the target, guys. Make the goalie work. I keep saying it, I keep saying it. Half time, yeah, I did write hard to think that Munch and Glad with that poor the second half, I couldn't think they'll be as bad as well they were the first half um I think they were slightly better the second half, but nothing fantastic. Uh, it would be nice, I commented, if Sterling would dribble and not just run into defenders. I have no idea what he was doing last night. He just seemed to, well, he thought if he could run at the defender, he'd probably get the ball through him. I don't know, I'm not too sure what he was doing last night. Well, I'll have a little chat about Sterling later. Um, I've 
put City should add to their tally, uh, but uh, Borussia munching lad back needed a little bit of a skill change on the pitch, I thought, and something psychological. So they, they looked a bit, not scared, but a little tentative to me. Um, but obviously it's probably in line with where they are in performances recently, to be honest with you. But again, more on that later when I sum up Borussia. Uh, into the second half, 46 mi minutes, folding high and wide from the right. So again, he needs to get it on target. Phil, come on. 54 minutes, an error lets Jesus in, but looks for a pass and delays the shot. Yeah, he, was, he could see him. I mean, he wasn't just glancing for players to pass to. He was literally looking round. It, it just, just go for goal, Jesus. You're a, you're a striker, just go for it. And then if obviously... If something looks as though he can't score, then just look for someone else. But as from receiving the ball in an error, say it was an error from Borussia, he, he was looking for someone to pass to all the time. I think I think Pep I think Pep really ripped his coat off of that one. I think remember that was the one. I think it was something like that. But uh, oh, you know, Jesus, it is a bit of an enigma, Jesus, isn't he? As far as scoring, because obviously we'll see in a minute he does score, doesn't he? Um, yeah, sixty minutes. Yeah, Brush just started to come into it. So as I said, they did improve slightly. There was a, a three on two for him again, but a, a poor final pass let City off the hook. Uh, if the, a, little, a better team, a better pass, and that could have easily been an equaliser. Uh, and then 63 minutes you had to play a little lovely back flick from across wasn't it just 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 went wide of the post it looked as though it was going in to me I did look as though it was going in from, from our view on the TV and to see it go past the post was fantastic I think Edison was happy about that as well but uh, he got dragged off after that didn't he the poor thing but yeah great little flick very very clever he deserved a goal just for the sheer cheek of it but hey yeah, but on 65 minutes, of course, back to Phil Banerjee. Uh, City decided enough was enough because obviously Borussia started to look a little bit dangerous. So City doubled the lead in the, 60, in the 65th minute with another well-made goal that owed much to the Super Bowl playing ability of Cancelo, it did, who lofted another sumptuous ball to the far post. Bernardo nodded the ball back and Jesus touched home ahead of a closing defender. So absolutely fantastic. Yeah, my little thoughts on that. Great header. Great, great cross by Cancelo, of course. A great hater. Again, a great header. He didn't. He knew exactly what he was doing. Bernardo knew exactly what he was doing. He was heading back to. He was heading back definitely for Jesus, he wasn't just a, a head and hope sort of thing, so all credit to him, and very brave, just to say, brave, Mr Enigma himself, Jesus, very brave uh, to get his foot in and, uh, and score the goal, a, a, a striker's goal, um, but <laughs> he doesn't always have the striker's instinct, does he? So that was 2-0, obviously it was 1-0's game over, 2 nils definitely game over. Uh, 69 minutes, Mahrez came on, Sterling went off, uh, yeah, uh, Pep was sort of uh, having a bit of a chat with him, wasn't he? He was trying to be Positive, but I think he was having a bit of a go in his his own, his own little way as well. Seventy eight minutes, Cancelo dink, wasn't it? Fantastic again, Cancelo took over KDB's role last night. Gundogan was a little bit a little bit quieter. Uh, Gundogan headed it superbly to Folden again, and uh, he can't keep. I think mean, that's the third time I've said that, isn't it? He can't keep his shot down Folden. I mean. He's gonna to have to see. You're gonna to have to get some practice, mate, because uh, you need to hit the target again. That happens against Bayern Munich in a Champions League semi-final or a final. We want them in the net. We want we want the goalie to work. Please come on, do your bit, because uh, he's good. He can do it. We know Foden's a quality quality finisher normally, but uh, that's three chances he fluffed last night that I've wrote down here. He may have had even more that I've forgot about. Eighty minutes, Torres and Aguero on. Fantastic for Foden and Jesus off. 83 minutes, yeah, Mares was through, wasn't he? I don't know what was going on. It's just a poor finish by Mares. Again, I think Pep was frustrated with that. I think it's showing him, uh, showing him throwing a bit of a paddy on the touchline. Uh, 93 minutes, yeah, I mean, Rodri um, had a great game. Played a steady, nice, steady game and blotted it a little bit, didn't he? He lost his concentration and, and passed it straight to the... Uh, uh, Borussia guy, unfortunately Edison who had not much to do all night apart from uh, coming out of his area a little bit to collect uh, long balls etc um, made a, a good okay save, wasn't a fantastic save wasn't the best best uh, shot from the Borussia player but uh, he did what he had to do and after 93 minutes of doing now that was fantastic and uh, Thankfully, Edison saved us. But Rodri, please, you've got to, you know, again, you've got to concentrate. That'd been 2 1, all right. We can beat him at, uh, at our place quite comfortably, but it, it would have been such a shame, wouldn't it? Uh, full time, yeah, should have been more. Should finish 
of course, it's, it's half time, isn't it? But we shouldn't have big problems in three weeks, should we? Uh, ref watch, I thought the ref was okay. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't think of anything. I sort of no comments about anybody else about the referee. I thought it was okay. So I'll give the ref and the officials a six out of ten, which is a standard score. I'm not going to go mad. But uh, yeah, I, I thought uh, the porch, I thought probably because there might be relations of Bernardo's and Diaz sort of thing. So, we, you know, might, they'll probably look into it. There's probably something wrong, isn't there? there? But uh, yeah, I'll give them a six out of ten. Match that shot set three by Brussia, only nine by City. So it wasn't exactly um, end to end, uh, <laughs> goal mouth to goal mouth, was it? Uh, on target, one from Brussia, just four from City. Possession, 39%. Uh, Brussia, 61 for City. Passes, 5 1 4. That's quite a lot for Brussia, a lot more than I thought it would be. 790 for City. Pass completion, 83%. That's slightly higher for Brussia than I thought as well. And 92% uh, for City, which is pretty good. Uh, corners, uh, I wish I'd done the corner market on the on the little bets. Uh, corners, none for Brush yet, and just one for City. Uh, have you ever seen a game where there's been no corners? Uh, we may have been, but hey, uh, that was close, wasn't it? Just one corner in the game. Fouls, seven by Brush and four by City. So, again, a quite a clean game. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I will talk about that in the summer anyway. Uh, player ratings, here we go. Simon Pekofsky, of course, I don't know where it, what his starting score is, but my starting score for a good team effort last night, I'm going to start at seven. But uh, there's not too many players who have scored above that, to be honest with you, last night. I thought, as I said, it was a solid... Um, efficient display without being overly spectacular apart from two or three of the players obviously right Edison this is Simon and I'll give my little comments after he barely touched the ball with his hands on his feet a happy bystander behind a dominant team made some useful interceptions in the second half yeah so yeah, I think I think um, Simon just does these ratings just slightly before the end of the game because obviously you'll see later on with the Rodri thing and again with the Edison thing, there's no real mention of that late save, was there? So he's give uh, Edison 7. I'm going to give Edison 7.5. I'm going to give him the extra half point for that save, for that error, error from Rodri. So yeah, I think that's, you know, because he is very quick on getting his scores out. So I mean, that's probably it. They probably do the scores just a minute, you know, sort of injury times approaching or something like that. So... And they'll alter it if need be, but obviously they don't have, if they don't nothing drastic happens, they won't alter it. Uh yeah, Walker showed his merit in the team when he used his speed and intelligence to cut out a glad back break, then came from nowhere and joined pushing on down the right flank with England teammates still. He's given eight. Yeah, I thought Walker played okay, but I'm not gonna give him an eight. I think i yeah, I think he yeah, um I will give him more than average. I'll give him a seven point five. I thought he played pretty well last night and say he's a bit in and out at the moment, isn't he? So given given that as well, he did okay. Uh, Diaz the man never stops. He led the defence with supreme confidence and authority, knocking it across the back four. Yes, yeah, so I'll give him a seven. I'm not going to disagree with that. I'll give Diaz a seven as well. Solid, solid enough act without being any fantastic and not real many challenges was the last night, let's be honest about it. Laporte, it was harsh on Stones to be dropped, but Laporte looks... Well, he's not dropped, is he? he don't, he's not dropping him. I mean, get the, you know, you're wrong there, Simon. He's not dropped. Uh, Laporte looked better than he has in recent appearances. He's showing good good awareness to defuse a dangerous situation stroking the ball into midfield so let's give him a seven again i'll same as diaz i'll give him both sevens i'll give him a seven as well uh cancello who needs kevin de bruyne when your left back can pick out a pass like him his versatility caused the german side problems all evening as quality ball made the breakthrough for the first two goals so give him a nine yeah i don't give many players a nine so but i can't disagree so i'm going to give him an 8.5 cancello i thought he played really well last night certainly in distribution wise as well uh rodri back in the team after watching the fernandino masterclass on sunday this was a very good again from rodri as he kept the team pushing up high and won the ball back in the opposition third he's given him an eight he's no mention of that late disaster that when we nearly give the ball away. So there you go. It's um, I think he did that before the end. So I've only given Rodri a seven because I thought I didn't think it was a fantastic. I thought it was okay. I thought it was nearly a seven point five performance. But uh, I'm sorry, he nearly cost us a goal. So I'm only going to give him seven. Gundogan firmly back into the starting lineup. He stalked the edge of the box. Hunting for more goals. Don Kane, but he played his part in the tireless attack. Yeah, let's give him a seven. Yeah, I'll give him a seven. A bit quieter from Bernardo. So, eh, Bernardo. Gundogan, he sort of got, um, I think Cancelo took, took a lot of the, took a lot of the uh, pressure and a lot of the, uh, uh, what's the word you're looking, I'm looking for. Um, anyway, he took a lot of it. <laughs> 
took it on his shoulders, didn't he? Whatever. I'm looking. I'll find the word in a minute. It's my old age, but uh, yeah, I think Cancelo did that. Gundo was a bit more of a bystander last night. Took responsibility, didn't he? Uh, obviously, uh, Cancelo. Gundo was a little bit laid back last night, so I'll give him a seven. Bernardo, anything Sterling can head so can Bernardo. A goal from one of the smallest players on the pitch. He's seven foot, isn't he, Bernardo? And another tireless performance. So let's give him an eight. I've got to give him an eight point five. <laughs> Bernardo, I thought it was fantastic. An assist and a goal. What more? What more? can anyone ask for fantastic and he never stopped old Duracell Bernardo did he so fantastic I'm, I'm going to call him Bernardo Jekyll um, Silver now as well because obviously he rises like a salmon doesn't he to head those balls Sterling, he got the ball in many a promising position, but was guilty of failing to make most of his opportunities, leaving Guardiola frustrated on the touchline. He certainly did. He's only given him a five. I'll give him 5.5, but I was nearly going to give him six, but I thought he was awful last night. He was absolutely terrible. He had not... Clueless, he's just, just like a kid on the playground, just running into open, hoping that the ball will come out the other side. I just, He just had no real tact. So skilled to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know what he was at. And after he's been playing quite well recently as well, so I have no, no idea. Uh, Foden caused problems by sticking to the touchline, meaning City could always switch play when they wanted. His pace troubled the glad back defence. Yeah, I don't think he's anything special. As I say, he had three good chances to at least please get one on target at least, but uh, he never tested the keeper. Uh, so his Simon's given him a seven. I've given him a seven as well. I'll give him a standard, but uh, yeah, I think he could have done a little bit better. Uh, Jesus led the line well. His pressing was a key part in City's scoring the first goal, lost all urgency or clarity when presented with the ball on marks in the box, so wasting the chance to score himself, even if he did end up on the score sheet. Yes, give him a 7, I think that's a bit mean, I'm going to give him 7.5, I'll give him another half, I say he, did. he was brave for the goal, yes he could have done better a couple of times, but uh, you know, he scored a second goal that's quite important for us as well to make it a little bit more comfortable, so I'll give him 7.5, say Simon will give him 7, I thought it was a bit mean on him. Substitutes, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna score the substitutes. Um Simon said for Mares, sixty-nine minutes uh, harshly dropped, rotated, although he didn't have much involvement. So yeah, I mean he's given a six, which is uh, I'm not gonna score him anyway. And Torres and Aguero come on far too late. Yeah, so my man of the match, citizen man of the match. Uh, of course, it's between Bernardo and Cancelo. I can't give it Bernardo again. I want to give it Bernardo again, but I can't, can I? So I'm going to have to give it Mr. Cancelo. Cancelo, Cancelo, however you pronounce it. My apologies if I can't pronounce it properly. It's all my fault. But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I can't give it Bernardo again. So, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Cancelo probably just about just about deserves it but fantastic yeah so he gets the citizen man of the match award well done mate uh, quirky snaps up to joe phil Foden is set to play or has played now his champions league knockout stage for a fourth season before turning 21 only the third player to achieve that along with ses fabregas 2005 2004-2005 and 2007-2008 and Theo Walcott 2006-07 to 2009-10 so there you are. well done Phil Bernardo Silva's opener was the 35th goal for Manchester City in all competitions but only his third with a headed finish well it's only about you well he's seven foot why, why is he only headed three goals all right he's, he's five foot six whatever Gabriel Jesus has scored in all five of his Champions League appearances in the round of 16 for Manchester City well done Gabby see you kept up your record Manchester City have won their 12th consecutive away match record breakers in all competitions breaking the record run for an English top flight side which was previously set by Manchester City uh, themselves in November 2017 where we break our own records we don't mess about stat well we'll see in a minute stat city Joe Cancelo and Bernardo so have now provided the assist for each other's most recent goal for City that's a bit of a rubbish stat stat city but hey it's there it's a quirky stat Man City have now kept clean, six clean sheets in this season's Champions League campaign. That's already at least two more than any of their previous shutout seasonal tallies in the competition. It's ours. It's our, it's our, it's our Champions League. It's like the Carabao Cup. It's ours. It's ours. With his appearance last night, Sergio Aguero moves into 16th place in Manchester City's all-time leading appearances. Uh, alongside Glimpardo, great company, and Ian Brightwell, also great company, on 380. Well done. City Extra. Another, another City Extra have got a couple of stats for us. Man City are the first team to keep a clean sheet in their first four away uh, Champions League matches in a campaign since 2010-11. And who was that? No, it wasn't us. Uh, United. There you go. So we'll share it with them. So we'll have to do another one, won't we, to, be, to become record breakers and nick it off them. That'd be fantastic. Couple of headlines. Uh, the Daily Mirror. Eyes on the prize. The Incredible Blues win 19 straight match and go 26 games unbeaten. But Pep demands even more, of course he does. So 
So we get a back pace to ourselves because Liverpool United weren't playing. So that only ever happens when that happens. Uh, inside, Pep glad all over. <laughs> Dear. Silva and Jesus strike, but it's Cancelo who really pulled the strings in City's fine victory. Guardiola still demands more, he does. And the image and a great image of Jesus there with the goal. The Daily Mirror onto the Daily Star. Bunch of glad back nil City 2, glad all over. City make it 19. No, I did that. No, it still says 19 on it. In a row, but Pep pleads for more. Yeah, he wants more. He was a bit animated, wasn't he? Of course he wants more. Great image. Yeah, stroll by the river. Stroll by it must be on the river. This you know, you're alright if you can go there and find out it's on the river, can't you? Silver and Jesus have City dreaming dreaming on the Danube. Fantastic. I've never been to Budapest, I'll have to go. Uh, there you go, stroll by the river, and again a great image again with Jesus and the goal. Is the goalkeeper? Is it Sommer? Did, did Phil Banerjee say earlier on? Yeah, goal Sommer. And our own little, our own little Manchester evening news, Man Manchester United evening news we used to call it, didn't we? Just who can stop this city machine? There we go. Who can stop them? Who knows? Great headline there. Probably where Stam on Saturday, but uh, <laughs> we're not going to that yet. <laughs> uh, failing that, probably United, but there you go, knowing, knowing our luck. Yeah. Zhao delivers ball onto a silver platter. Yeah, see what he did there? Uh, Angelino, Pep kill my self-confidence. Oh, stop whinging, you mad ass. Pep is still not happy with his blues. No, is that sort of a, a theme that's sort of coming through all the time, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... Angelino, it's not to do with last night's game, but I mean, get on with it. Get on with whatever you're doing. You're not, you're not even a city player now. Just stop whinging. Yeah, head conclusions then. Yeah, Borussia Mönchengladbach, they're eighth in the Bundesliga. They're not all right. They've had uh, recent victories against uh, Borussia Dortmund, and uh, I think they beat Bayern Munich as well. Um, but yeah, they they just they just literally lost at home to the next to bottom team in the Bundesliga as well. So. I think we saw they're not, they, they didn't seem to have that. And there's certainly none of their players last night. I would take it, uh, all right, that player, a little black back flick was quite nice, but I don't think there's any of those players would get into the City team. Um, so they are struggling a little bit. Say, so being eight, it's an 18 league, 18 team league. So, yeah, I think they can be better than that, but they're struggling a bit at the moment. I don't know the reasons for that. I don't think they've got any particular big injury problems, etc. But uh, they are struggling. So, I don't think they were very good. I think of the of the sixteen teams in the last sixteen. I think I think a lot of people said they're one of the weakest, and I, I think based on last night, we'd have to we'd have to agree with that, won't we? So I'm sure they can play better, and they will have nothing to lose, of course, coming to the Etihad. But they've got they've, are they able to play better? That's that's the point. They did, did worry us a couple of times, but as I said, if just a little bit of a better pass, and we, they could have had a goal or two, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, they were. They just looked in awe, to be honest. I think they're a little bit overawed last night, uh, which is good. But we're certainly, you know, we're not. We're going to have other teams that aren't going to be overawed. We know that. So, uh, yeah, we were efficient. We did what we had to do last night. But uh, yeah, I don't think they're a great team. Uh, as far as City, as I said, Pep was caught obviously on camera being very frustrated. And I did say about the midfielders. I mean, Foden. There you go. The prime example. Three good, three chances over the bar. Um, we've got to put those, but you know, we've got to aim a bit, a bit low. We've got to improve the shooting. I, mean, I did actually say a couple of games ago, or a couple of reviews ago, or whatever, about the heading, and obviously Bernardo's took, <laughs> took obviously on Sterling. Obviously in the last game, obviously he scored a header into as well. So it looks as though I said practice the heading and get them on target. It's no good heading over the bar or wide. I mean, so obviously certain players can, can take make note of that. You know, your uh, Stones is and your Laporte is and your. The big lads who come up, Rodri, Rodri and um, obviously those guys, Diaz, can take note. Please get your headers on target. That's after battle. Uh, so at least Bernardo's took heed of that. I did call Cancelo the nearly man and said, well, obviously last time I did that, he, he stepped up. So there you go. He must, I told you he watches these vlogs. He knows I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut Bernard up. He's talking rubbish. So, yeah, I did call Cancelo the, the nearly man. So at least he stepped up again. So next time he drops, I'll do it again. And perhaps he'll score another couple or all that assist another couple or whatever so yeah uh, as I said Pep yeah Pep 
Yeah, I think he is unhappy, but he's, as I said, he's asking midfielders to score goals and it's not natural, isn't it? But it should be more natural, that's what I'm saying. I think the midfielders could do better. And certainly, you'll say, just take Foden as an example. I'm just going to pick on him last night. He could have done a lot better. I mean, he's not hes not just him. But, uh, you know, obviously Sterling. Well, I don't want to talk about Sterling again. I think I've vented my little things on Sterling. I just thought he was he was awful. I just thought he just looked totally as though he'd never touched a football before and knowing what to do with it. He just literally, like you would on a school playground, just run into players. I wasn't too sure what was going on. He, he has had three or four good games recently as well. So... Yeah, I think he needs to sort something out there. I don't know what quite happened there. Uh, yeah, and obviously the change in five, six, seven players, of course it'll affect us uh, and that's going to affect the team. But we've got the quality there now, haven't we? So it's not affecting us too badly, is it? But uh, obviously when it comes... I think you can tell which... You, I think if it's a big, big game, surely it's going to be Diaz and Stones. Surely Laporte is coming in it for the sort of non-big games, if you like, or games that are quite winnable with a, a little bit of a change. So, And KDB is obviously going to come back. So it'd be interesting to see what the team is and what we play against West Ham. But I, I assume the West Ham game is going to be probably our strong team isn't it it's going to be a strong I'm, I'm going to say our strongest team and our sort of not bad team so there you go yeah I think West Ham game is going to be our strongest team isn't it for that one so we'll see anyway about that yeah but I think Pep, Pep's all right but see he has brought some of it on himself so as I say I've never seen him so animated as he was last night and uh, but we always did look a little bit comfortable didn't we Anyway, let me know what you think and uh, let me know your player ratings, etc. Your man of the match and stuff like that. Thanks for joining. Of course, I'll be back with a preview of that West Ham game. I think it's early kickoff on Saturday, isn't it? So I'll try and get the preview out uh, Friday morning ish. But obviously, it could be. I'll try and get it out Thursday night or tonight as I'm doing this. But I doubt I'll have a chance to do it tonight. So it'll probably be sometime on Friday anyway. So please keep your eyes out for that. Um, please check out all my recent vlogs. And there'll soon be a, a look back at, uh, I think, a little. Look back a little bit of a mini quiz, a little bit of a question and answer thing on um, the League Cup final on the 28th of February 1976 against Newcastle. So just grab a quick look back at that and a few memories of that. So please look out for that. And of course, be a, that was the week that was featuring the Arsenal and Gladbach games as well. So all over the next two or three games. So keep, keep push that notification button if you're interested anyway. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Anyway, what are you going to do with this day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. So you join me here again, hopefully, on the Citizen channel. Or perhaps you flit across, have a look at my film and TV channel. All I ever ask of you is please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.